of an album that the Bone Shakers digitally re-released this year. So if you're on YouTube, Spotify, Deezer, wherever you like to stream your music, uh, the album's called Pouring Gasoline. It featured an incredible vocalist named Malford Milligan, who's considered the voice of Austin, Texas. And uh, just a fabulous album, but this right here was the title track off of that. <laughs>
It's funny about that song. It's, it, it's like one of my favorite songs. It's about a guy. He's from Australia. His name is Paul Kelly. Anybody know Paul Kelly? Like down there, he's like, oh, see? So he's like the equivalent of sort of their Bob Dylan to me, right? You know, people would come up to me and go like, hey, he saved my life. I was going to kill myself and I was in the tour door and it saved my life. When I was playing with him, I was like, really? Okay. You know. But that song was really, his song, his version is called Pouring Petrol. And he heard my bird, he says, that, that rolls off the tongue so much better. <laughs> you know, because he's like, you know, his bird is like. That's Paul's version. Of course, I had to go. That's yeah. that Detroit swagger right there. <laughs> That's how that happens. I had to put that thing on it, you know, Detroit. whatever that is. Song. Speaking of Detroit swagger, can can we do something by your your buddy Lamont? Oh, hey, yeah, we can do that. There's no children here right now, right? <laughs> I, I only me. Thank you, thank you. I'll take it. Some of you might have to leave. This is a, it's a nasty song. Those, those of you underage have, will have to go. You, 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 you. But you know, <laughs> it's a nasty song. I'm sorry. I apologize now. But you know, hey, you know. Growing up in Detroit, you know, just having all this great stuff and all this, being around all these great people and meeting all these great people and different things, you know, and then you know, playing with them, it's, it's like an amazing thing. But the, I used to go to this club in, in, down in the Cass Corridor, it's called Alvin's, and there's a band who used to play them every Monday and Tuesday night called the Buzz Tones. And the lead singer's name was Lamont Zodiac. Sharp dresser, great looking guy, could write a song, you know, could really sing. But anyway, this song is like one of, another one of those songs, you know, I liked it, I changed it, now we do it. And this is uh, called Bow Wow Wow, and it goes like this. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, Miss Holly Lopey Montgomery.
best this year, all the way from Austin, Texas. Right here. Yeah. Once again, Polly Little Bean Montgomery. Yeah. You want to switch it up? I might switch up that. Yeah. So we've uh, we've had a, a little surprise hanging out in the corner of the Tuesday Night Music Club over here. This is a cigar box guitar that Randy conveniently squeezes in his uh, guitar case when he flies overseas. <laughs> We're gonna break it out for something a little different. I think somebody at TSA was playing it. It's like it's kind of strings are kind of sticky. So someone at TSA was playing it. I think so. I think so. <laughs> this is good music. It smells like peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What? what is that? 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 What is that?
Very marvellous. Randy Jacobs. I'm changing the name. His name is now Peter Curry. And one time, TSA is doing something on this sir. He said his name is Peanut Butter. Wait, 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 wait. You wanna, do you want to hear one more with this? Yeah. 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 I think they like it. One more. I think they like it. Peanut <laughs> Butter, no. One more, one more, one more. One more for the roll, baby. It's fun to switch it up every now and then. Right? After all that getting out of it, I gotta get back in. <laughs> <laughs> Get back in my thing, Tell you, I can tell you from from all the things that I've learned from people that knew him, he would he would he would never want that. He would never want people playing this stuff exactly the same way. BB King used to say to me all the time, "Don't play it like yesterday. Play it like today. Play it like what, how you would play it, not, how, not exactly like me." You know what I mean? 
Randy Jacobs and peanut butter, everybody. Hey, you know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, you know. One of these days we're gonna get Randy to write a book. I swear. One of the one of my favorite things about being in this band, and there's a lot of great things about being in this band. We all love each other very much, but uh, just getting the stories out of this man and his incredible career. He was recording with Motown for Motown starting at age 16? 14. 14? Jesus. <laughs> and just that that legacy from such a young age, it's it's just incredible. And I think the list of people that he hasn't played or recorded with is probably shorter than the list of people that he has. <laughs> you know, I tell people it was a flute. Um, you know, you, you, you're 14, you play with your little buddies around the corner, you know what I mean? I got my wagon, I got my, my, my little fender, my mom got me, finally got me a real amp, you know? Got that sucker in there, got my, got my uh, a box guitar that I got from a neighbor, you know? So I'm going around the corner, a guy driving down the city goes, Hey, can you play that thing? I said, I don't know, maybe. You know what I mean? We got a session for you. And then I go, I go to the session, and, and then Sylvia Moy, and she wrote Fingertips with CB Wonder and my Sherry Moore. And the amazing thing about her, she, when people didn't have studios in their house, she had a studio in her house. And she lived on West Grand Boulevard, right down the street from where Motown, the original Motown, where she lived right on that corner up until she died. Like, you know, probably in 2000, I don't know, like, like 2005 or something. But every time I went to her house after that, she always had another, like the next thing. <laughs> but when we first did it, it was just four-track Reeboks. You know what I mean? And so if you play, we play. And then, okay, we're going to put something else on. Do we, that plays and we play again on top of that. And that was just how it was, you know, back then. Now it's so easy. You know, press a button and there it is, you know. But good stuff, you know. Good stuff. Yeah. Somebody's interfering with my signal. <laughs> yep, there it's him. Well, while, while Randy's finding his signal, I just have to give a huge thank you to Richard for having us back and to the whole Tuesday Night Music Club for everything that they do here. Spaces like this and communities are so special. They're so special because they give everybody a place to come and hang out and to enjoy music. They give artists a home to come and share what we create with folks like yourself. So thank you for everything that you do. Ten years, right? Yeah. Ten years recently. That's huge. Yeah. That is huge. Very cool. Appreciate you guys coming out. Yes. We came here the last time. You know, we were just figuring it out. You know what I mean? I just got this amazing singer in the band. We, we cut a record, you know. And it wasn't like it wasn't like it was planned, you know. We, I met her, you know. I was I was brought in by a guy named John Willard to play on her record. Yeah. And that was just how it started, you know. My my first Bone Shakers gig was in this room. Oh. Me too. Me too. Yeah, Holly's first Bone Shakers gig was in this room. So, so like not to like get all about it, but this is a very special space for at least the two of us, but I think for everybody up here. Yeah. You know, Jen, Jenny goes. I got this bass player. She's already in London visiting some friends. We needed a bass player. But we didn't need the ticket. Right. So, so, so Holly, Holly sent a video, you know what I mean, of her playing the stuff. And I said, yeah, she's, got a, she's, she's a groove hound, let's do it. And then we came over, that was the first time we met, is at the rehearsal before the show. Yeah. And, and at that, 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 that time, that was kind of how it was, you know. Les and I, we go way back. Prison, we, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> we know it we know a very long time. Uh, you know he's great. I had him in, in the last the last shows that was not was ever did. He was a drummer for that. You know, I mean he, he's great. And, uh, it's not always nice to have him here with us. You know, what I mean? oh, yeah, yeah. man. I think we should do Julian's song because Julian's okay, local to this area. Good, so, uh, are you guys familiar with a, a local blues artist named Julian Burdick? He has a band called 24 Pesos. And, uh, and he has a lot of solo shows as well, but he's based out of London. And he wrote this next song. Our producer, John Wooler, found it, brought it to us. And the lyrics that Julian wrote are just poetry. They're so beautiful. We loved it. And so we recorded our own version. Now, the story goes, Julian recorded it, but doesn't really play it at his own shows. And when he heard our version of it, because we were tagging him, you know, on Insta and Facebook when we released the song, 
he heard it and he reached out on social media and said, thank you so much for covering my song. I love what you did. It's inspired me to start playing it at my own shows. So I think it's very cool the way that artists can inspire each other in different ways. Uh, but we love this song, um, so please look him up, Julian Verda. Go out and see his show since you all live here and you can support what he does. And it uh, sounds like this.
right here was written by uh, Little Steven, Steven Van Zandt of Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band, for any Bruce Springsteen fans. Yeah.
There's so much wah-wah in that song. Never apologize for so much wah-wah. Our producer, his name is John Willard. And uh, he's a Scottish gentleman. Yep. And he loves the wah-wah. <laughs> I wish I could do the proper Scottish accent. Randy, more wah-wah. You know, like, dude, I can't, I can't take a wah-wah solo on every song. Dude, you know, but he's like, wah-wah crazy. Dude, come on. Actually, for a Christmas gift, I found a Christmas ornament that was a little tiny Wawa on Etsy. He loved it. <laughs> yeah, he did. But he's, amazing, he's an amazing guy. And he signed the Bone Shakers, our first record deal, and he was on Virgin Records. He had been in Virgin Records since he was 17 years old. Like he would pick Gary Oldman up, you know, uh, was it, the Tubular Bells guy. He would pick him up to come do the yeah. sessions. That was his job at Virgin, and later he became a vice president. They're talking about working your way up, right? <laughs> and uh, one of the major things that he did, when no one else wanted it, you know, he, he did the, the first Gary Moore record. He was a producer on the record. He, when no one else wanted to touch it, oh man, he's a metal guy. He's like, you know, he's Dan Lindsay, he's not a blues guy. He took that record, and that record sold four million records, like right out of the box. And that's why he was, he became a vice president and then president of his own label. But we've been friends ever since. Once, once, you know, when we stopped being on Virgin Records and that, you know, I've always done productions with him and we've always stayed close. And then when, you know, he brought me to Jenny and we're all still together. And it's still a great thing, you know what I mean? Yeah! yeah. Well, I think we, we got time for maybe one. One! One more! Maybe two if, they, if they're really, really good out there. One. If they're really loud after the next one, maybe two. Well, see, you you got to sing a nasty song, but I haven't gotten to sing a nasty song yet. Yeah, an equal opportunity. <laughs> Look over here and uh, look at something. <laughs> I apologize. She can't help herself. I can't, I can't help myself. Well, see, here's the thing. In blues music, there are a lot of songs written by men that celebrate how much they love their big women, right? And... And I'm not a size zero. I, I'm well aware. I, I love my beer and I love my biscuits and I make this many apologies for it. And I, I like to call it being a woman sized woman. All right? I'm a woman sized woman. So I love those songs, but they're not nearly enough songs written by blues women about how much they love their big men. 17,432. <laughs> and big boys need love too. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? And one day Randy sent me a text and all it was was just this little greasy guitar groove and he said, can you do something with this? And I had had these lyrics just living at home and could never find the right music for him until he sent me that group. And I said, yes, I can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he read those words and he, all he wrote back was, really? <laughs> I said, yes, really. So you know what? These words were written by myself. The music was written by Randy and it sounds a little something like this. <coughs>
Taking the covered wagon to the studio. <laughs> yes, you know, had my guitar on the donkey, you know. Like, anyway, <laughs> anyway I, I took a little, I didn't write this song, you know. I, I just kind of stole parts of it and made a song out of it. But the, but the author of the song is always going to be James Brown, you know. But but I took Tired of Your Jive, which is a group from B.B. King. I was listening to it one day. And then later, I listened to Mother Popcorn, and I thought, wow, this line is really cool. So I took the bass line, sort of changed it around, and took the groove from that, and then took the lyrics from a song called, called, called Sweat, and it goes like this. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I know it's not politically correct, correct about him, but that dude had some shit on him. He knew how he knew how to make a groove. He knew how to play guitar. He knew how to play piano. And this song he wrote in the fifties. He did like four versions of this song he, over the years. You know, he did one in the fifties, and one in the sixties, one in the seventies. But you know, we, we we like to rock a little bit. And uh, we hope you like it. It goes like this.